give you a behind the scenes look at what it's like to be the team photographer of the Boston Red Sox. So at the beginning of this season, the Red Sox hired a new manager to lead their ball club. His name is Alex Cora, and he's a great guy. He's young, he's hip, he's approachable, he's friendly, he embraces marketing and social media. He's not really your typical old school, hard nosed, rough around the edges baseball manager. And during one of the first games this season, Alex comes up to me while I'm shooting photos in the dugout and he says, uh, hey Billy, I need your help, I, I have an idea. And I'm like, all right, what do you got, Alex? And he says, man, I just got here and uh, I have nothing on my office walls. I got to decorate my walls with something. And I say, okay, well, I've got tons of pictures we can look through. Just give me a good time and, you know, we'll sit down and take a look. And he says, oh, no, 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 no. I, uh, that's not what I had in mind. Here's my idea that, uh, that I want you to help me with. He says, can you print me out one photo that shows the defining moment of every single game that we win this season? Okay, so let me just back up and give you a brief visual of this. So this is what the wall in the manager's office at the Red Sox used to look like before Alex got here. Okay, it showed the black and white photos of every manager to manage the Red Sox since the beginning of time. And Alex gets here on the first day and he takes a look at the wall and he says, eh, I don't think so. Take it down. And so he starts the season with a blank wall in his office and slowly but surely, game by game, Win by win, day by day, the wall in his office fills up with new photos. So this is what the wall in his office looks like right now. So all I know is that the team, the players, they come into his office for meetings and they see all these photos of accomplishments from the season up on the wall. And for those of you who aren't Red Sox fans, just to briefly bring you up to speed, the Red Sox are in the midst of putting together one of their most historic, successful seasons in the history of the Red Sox and in the history of baseball, really. So all I'm saying is as a team photographer, I'm taking some credit for this because I'm taking these inspiring photos that they see every day. You know, what's interesting about this wall when I look at it, is it and it strikes me, is that it's pretty similar to what we do, a lot of us do in our day-to-day -day lives. We all, I mean, it's like the baseball version of like hanging your kid's report card on the, on the refrigerator when they do, when they get good grades. We all use the Instagram feed, the grid, to post versions of our best self online. And we all use Facebook, the wall, to share our successes with our family and friends. I'm sure at some point I could give another talk of higher level talk about the meaning of photography and the way we, sell, we can use photography to celebrate our accomplishments like Alex does here and like so many of us do. That's probably for another time. But I think the interesting thing about this wall, when I look at it, the photos that are up on the wall aren't always the best photo. They're not, they may show the photo of the best moment of the game or the best player for that particular game, but in my opinion, these don't, also, that don't necessarily, necessarily always mean that they're the best photo or the most artistic photo. Okay, so I sit at a cubicle that is small enough to barely fit my computer and my gear, but let's just pretend for a second that I had a big shiny office and that I could put up my own wall from this year with beautiful photos. I think mine would look something like this, and this is what I want to take you through a little bit here tonight. So as a team photographer, there are three things that you're looking for when you're out there shooting. The first is peak action. You're looking to slow down a series of human movement into a single isolated moment that's frozen in time. Now, how do we do it? Well, the Red Sox were really lucky to be able to use the top of the line technology when it comes to cameras. Uh, the camera that I use is capable of shooting at 10 to 12 frames per second. Okay, so that goes a long way when you're trying to get photos like this of Xander Bogarts shattering his bat in half as he swings through the ball. They also allow you to shoot at a very high shutter speed, which helps freeze action. So this photo of Mookie Betts, the exposure was made at one two thousandth of a second. Now that's fast enough to freeze the helmet as it flies off of his head and the specks of dirt as they fly off the ground. And it's also fast enough to freeze 
to suspend Andrew Benintendi in midair as he leaps in front of the, the green monster scoreboard to make a leaping catch. But a fast camera and a fast shutter can only take you so far in photography, and I always tell people, it's not about the camera, even though they think it is. You have to be fast as a photographer yourself, and you have to pay attention to the ebbs and the flows and the nuances of the game. And that way you'll be ready when a fight breaks out between the Red Sox and the Yankees <laughs> to get the shot. You really never know what you're going to get at Fenway Park on any given night. And seriously, that's what keeps me coming back every single night. So as photographers, there's nothing in this world that we love more than good light. Okay, some people chase twisters, right? Some people chase their dreams. I run out to right field on a nice summer night and I chase the sunlight. And I try and use light to convey a mood or portray an emotion or tell a better story. Now sometimes I try and create the light all on my own. So I can take what I would consider kind of a drab, nondescript, boring hallway like this, and with strobe technology, turn it into something that's magical. Or to give dimension to a scene. Or to add depth to a subject. Or I can, or I can make use of something as simple as a projector to project the images of stars Onto the, onto the profiles of our all-stars. These were some portraits we did of our, our five all-stars uh, before the all-star game this year, and they were into the idea. Other times, the light kind of happens all on its own, and Mother Nature takes over. A beautiful sun flare in a mid-afternoon game, <clears throat> a perfect midsummer evening sunset, or a display of cell phone lights by the fans in the stadium. So I actually texted Matt Barnes, the pitcher in this photo. I was like, was that hard to pitch? Like, was, were you distracted? And he was like, yeah, I was really distracted. It was really hard. But he had a great inning, and he actually said, you know, he appreciated the show of support from the fans. But good light and good action are nothing without the third and final most important ingredient in, in sports photography, and that is human emotion. The Red Sox have this little tradition where if any player on any given day has a, an outstanding game, they get dunked with a bucket of ice cold Gatorade. And this is what happened here with Mookie Betts. He hit three home runs in a single game and he got the bucket. And this happened again with JD this season and again with Benny and again with Xander. You know, people always think my job is so glamorous and it's like high profile and everything. And sometimes they're right. Most of the times they are. But sometimes it's really not that glamorous. I'm the guy in the gray shirt. That's me right there getting soaked. <laughs> Dream job, right? Emotions are what brings your subjects to life in photography. And I think the photos that make the most impact are the ones that establish some sort of emotional connection to the viewer, where the viewer can draw some sort of similarity from their experience in life. Like, haven't we all walked through Times Square and pose, pose for a photo, something like this, or this? This is our second baseman of the Boston Red Sox, Eduardo Nunez, just taking a stroll through Times Square. And this was actually from a series I did earlier this year on an off day that the players had in New York City during a series against the Yankees. I wanted to see kind of how they live on a day off. And so this is Matt Barnes, a pitcher for us in the Apple Store in Manhattan, trying to decide if he should buy the A to the A+. Plus. Ultimately, he went with portrait mode. This is another pitcher, Drew Pomerantz, hanging out at his home with his wife, Carolyn. Our center fielder, Jackie Bradley Jr., spending a day at the Central Park Zoo with his wife and his daughter. And our all-star right fielder, Mookie Betts, enjoying some crab legs for dinner. In my work, I try and show that these guys, although they're multimillionaires and high-profile people, in a lot of ways, they're just like you and I. So while it's one thing to just shoot the, grand, the swing on the Grand Slam as Mookie crushes one over the Green Monster, I think the picture that you're going to remember more is this one, the one that shows the emotion, the feeling. I think 
you're going to remember this one. The look on Andrew Benintendi's face as he realizes he just won the game for his teammates with a walk-off single up the middle. And while this is an okay picture of Xander celebrating his walk-off 10th inning Grand Slam, I think you'll probably remember this one more. Fun fact about this one, actually. This was shot with a remote control camera that was hanging on the roof of Fenway Park. So as I'm shooting this photo from the first base photo pit on the field level, it's remotely triggering that camera up on the roof to get this photo. Technology is nuts. So really my job is simply to act as a link between a team and you guys, the fans, and to tell that story in the best way that I know how. But I think for all of us, there's a larger takeaway here, and that's in some way, photography, we can all use photography in some way to connect with one another and to tell a great story. And it's my favorite way to tell a great story. So whether you're posting a photo that you took on your iPhone to Instagram, or it's a print of a photo hanging in the manager's office, or it was shot with a fancy camera hanging out of the window of a helicopter. We can all use photography in our own way to enrich and enhance our lives and really to tell a great story. Thank you so much.